Onc Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onc Live. The common presentation for GIST can actually be somewhat nonspecific. Uh, patients that have GIST may sometimes present with abdominal discomfort, although the most common sign can generally be gastrointestinal bleeding. Uh, it can sometimes be in the acute setting, uh, but most commonly it's chronic, and so oftentimes patients may report symptoms related to anemia, such as fatigue, uh, sometimes a change in skin color, and ultimately if you check their laboratory values, they will generally have a lower than expected hemoglobin. Uh, when this occurs, there's generally a workup that involves the assistance of both a good general internal medicine physician or a family practitioner, and most likely gastrointestinal um, experts such as a, a gastroenterologist. Uh, Typically uh, via endoscopy, uh, by upper endoscopy or colonoscopy, these tumors can oftentimes be detected. But what makes these tumors somewhat tricky to detect is the fact that they don't typically occur on the outermost layer um, of the um, stomach lining or the intestinal lining. From an endoscopic standpoint, these tumors may oftentimes have a subtle appearance in that the endoscopist may see uh, a raised area in an area of the stomach or small intestine that should not have this. And this is generally because these tumors arise in the muscular layer of the intestine and stomach rather than the, um, the epithelial portion of the, of the uh, GI tract. Um, once there is suspicion uh, of a gastrointestinal stromal tumor, uh, attempts to biopsy should be made as it's important to ensure that we're not dealing with any other disease besides GIST. The majority of patients these days that present with gastrointestinal stromal tumors actually have, are asymptomatic. And often we find these tumors on scans, usually CT scans that, done for, that is done for other reasons. Also in patients who undergo endoscopy, we can find gastrointestinal stromal tumors as incidental findings. However, there are some patients that present with symptoms. These can include bleeding from the gastrointestinal tract and also pain. The way we uh, diagnose these tumors is usually dependent on the location of the tumor. In patients with gastric gastrointestinal stromal tumors, we prefer to do a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis with IV and PO contrast. And often with this, we see the patient to have a polypoid lesion that is extending out from the wall of the stomach into the surrounding area. Sometimes this can also intrude into the stomach itself. In other locations, such as the small bowel, the CT scan is also a diagnostic test, as it is also for patients with rectal gastrointestinal stromal tumors. In addition, in patients with rectal and colonic gastrointestinal stromal tumors, we also I want to do a colonoscopy to make sure that this is not an adenocarcinoma, which is far more common in these locations than gastrointestinal stromal tumors are. Once the patient has undergone the CT scan, we then usually do an endoscopy with an endoscopic ultrasound, specifically for the patients with gastric and rectal tumors. The reason this is important is that depending on the location of the wall, that the tumor originates from. It can be quite diagnostic of a gastrointestinal stromal tumors. These tumors usually originate from the fourth layer, which is the muscularis propria layer. And this allows us then to determine that this is likely a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. However, there are other tumors that can also originate from this area, including leiomyomas and leiomyosarcomas. For this reason, getting a biopsy is very important. Often when we do endoscopy on these patients, we found that the mucosa of the stomach or the rectum appears normal. But the tumor instead originates from within the wall. So for this reason, using the endoscopic ultrasound, we can then find the lesion and also perform a core biopsy of this. That core biopsy is important because we can, with that, do not only H&E staining, but also do immunohistochemical staining for CKIT, PDHFR, and other receptors. The way we diagnose this is often with CKIT staining. 95% of all tumors express CKIT. However, there are tumors that don't express CKIT. Some of these tumors may instead express DOG1, which is another marker. They may also express the PGFR receptor. There are also tumors that are negative for both CKIT and DOG1, but on histology, looks very much like a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. In these tumors, doing PKC theta immunohistochemical staining can be beneficial in diagnosing this as a gastrointestinal stromal tumor.